Our last two episodes took a look at Romans 13, along with a few other New Testament dealings with government. When looking at Romans 13, we noted a number of details which strongly contradict the post-Constantinian pro-state interpretation. First, we noted that Romans 13's use of government as ministers and rulers as ministers um, fit with a, a common trend in the Bible, which noted a lot of tyrants as ministers of God. People such as Nebuchadnezzar, who was extremely wicked, but he was God's minister. And the focus isn't on government being willing servants of God and, and these goods, but rather on God's sovereignty even over the most wicked of circumstances, which makes it as though these wicked rulers are his ministers because he accomplishes good even through them. Second, we noted that Romans 13 in context is sandwiched between two love passages. In uh, Romans 12, Paul talks about loving enemies and, and all these kinds of ideas of love. And then there's the passage on government. And then, right after that, he talks once again about love. So Paul is simply declaring that even in the face of those unjust rulers who seem to be sovereign, Christians can fulfill the love and service mandates that are in Romans 12 because God is the truly sovereign one, making even Caesar's actions a service to his ultimate accomplishing of good. After our episode on Romans 13, we bolstered our case by looking at two other places in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6 and the book of 1 Peter. In 1 Corinthians 6, Paul essentially tells believers, don't go to government, don't go to the courts, don't take brothers and sisters to courts, because why would you go to them, those people who are like antithetical to the Christian way of life? Like They're not thinking like God's people, they're, they're not doing God's bidding. And so uh, he says, don't go to the courts. And so we take a look at that passage and how Paul does something similar in 1 Corinthians 6 as he does in Romans 13, where he uses this othering language, right? We, the church body, and they, the government arm. We also took a look at the book of 1 Peter and its call for Christians to submit to government in the light of God's sovereignty over them and even working of good through them. We are aliens and strangers here, and we can live rightly knowing that our God is in control. And how does God bring about justice? Well, Romans 13 tells us the one way that he does this is by allowing governments to bear the sword in judgment, just as we see all throughout the Old Testament. Perhaps most famously in Isaiah 10, where God judges evil Assyria uh, and he uses them to judge Israel, but then he subsequently judges Assyria for their evil. While Peter doesn't exactly say the same thing, he does quote Psalm 34, which is of interest, because its idea is about God being sovereign and using evil to slay the wicked. Check out the full episodes for more.